for a very long time we were sugarcane farmers, Mr. Speaker. It was quite interesting watching my brother, Senator Cherarge, speak. Because they say, Mr. Speaker, that if you watch or cheer as a crocodile feeds on the children of your neighbor, when it is done with those children, it will come for your own children. For a very long time, the cries of the people of Western who are sugarcane farmers have been ignored. We have been saying that we need to curb the problem of importation of uh, sugar because it is killing our industries. But because we are gracious people, we are not actually laughing at the farmers in the North Rift about what is befallen them now. In fact, we are crying with them. Because at it, as it just happens, Mr. Speaker, we also grow maize in Western Kenya. Mr. Speaker, perhaps we could start with understanding what this food security is. And just a cursory search will tell you that food security means when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe, nutritious food that meets their dietary needs, food preference for an active and healthy life. Mr. Speaker, if I break down those requirements, it is actually possible for you to have physical access to food, but you do not have the economic access to that food. If you have uh, a bag of maize here that is going for 10,000 shillings, I am physically near the bag, but I cannot actually afford to buy that bag. Then there is no food security. Mr. Speaker, the second limb it has, is that it has to be sufficient and most importantly, safe. This is where this entire discussion about whether GMO is the panacea to food security in this country is cropping up. And I am happy that I have had my brother, Senator Chararge, saying that uh, the president in some, you know, uh, private meeting with him has assured the country that there will have to be a discussion on the move to lift the ban on GMOs before those GMOs are imported. I am a bit concerned, Mr. Speaker, because in my understanding, and yesterday we spoke about this, the Constitution requires that this discussion must be have had prior to that decision to lift the ban, not after. It doesn't make any sense. And our greater concern stems from the fact that we are already hearing that even as Gerard Senator Gerard carrying product that we don't know whether is GMO or non-GMO, Mr. Speaker. The last limb there that the food must meet their dietary needs and food preferences, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know that for us, from the Mulembe Nation, our preference is Ugali. It is maize. Mr. Speaker, this means it is actually possible that you can lock a Luya man like myself in a store full of cooked rice and njahe, for instance, enough for a year. But you will find me dead from starvation after three days because that's not my preference. I don't consider it food for me, Mr. Speaker. So this entire, all these criteria must be met for us to ensure food security. Mr. Speaker, the mover or the, or the person who has brought this motion, the mover himself, has identified why we are in this problem, why Kenya is not a food secure nation. Number one, he has talked about inadequate rainfall. Number two, is decline in the number of farmers and the farmlands under cultivation. Incidentally, although he is from the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, coalition, he has also cited the war in Ukraine. This is curious because when the former president, Uru Kenyatta, said that in fact the war in Ukraine had a bearing on the prices of food and availability of food globally, it is the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition that rubbished him and said that is an excuse. And lastly, he has cited the high cost of inputs, Mr. Speaker. So we would want this conversation. In fact, if these are the reasons why we are in the position we are, then we should be discussing solutions to all those problems that have been identified as the causes of the insecurity when it comes to food in this country. So what had we proposed uh, for those of us in the Azimio coalition? On the question of inadequate rainfall, Mr. Speaker, it is now acknowledged that because of the phenomenon of uh, climate change, it is becoming increasingly difficult for us to rely on rain-fed agriculture because the weather patterns have changed so drastically that farmers can no longer predict with any certainty when it's going to rain, 
when it's not going to rain, when it's time to plant, and when it's uh, time not to plant. We had proposed as the Azimio Coalition, Mr. Speaker, to move away drastically from rain fed agriculture and invest more in irrigation. Mr. Speaker, we strongly uh, spoke uh, about the need for us to revive the major irrigation schemes, including Galana Kulalu, which, Mr. Speaker, we all know was, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the entire scheme collapsed because of one thing and one thing only, and that is corruption, Mr. Speaker. And which is why, when we were campaigning, we were very, very strong on this issue of combating corruption because it rears its ugly head in all spheres of our lives, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the decline in the number of farmers and, farm, and, and farms under uh, cultivation, we should be encouraging people to engage in agriculture, Mr. Speaker. But what has happened in the past, and even currently, is that we continue to discourage people from engaging in agriculture as a commercial enterprise. As Senator Mandago uh, said, this is not a hobby. There are people whose livelihoods depend on agriculture and agriculture only. Mr. Speaker, if you see what is happening right now, and I compared this, what is going on in the country right, right now, to a fight between farmers and traders. It's the traditional fight even with the, within the sugar industry that has always been there between people who believe in an honest work that you can spend six months on a farm tending to your crop, eight months on a farm tending to your crop, an honest living where you earn the sweat of your brow, Mr. Speaker. And at the end of that, there's a product for you to take to the market. And there are people who sit in air-conditioned rooms here in uh, Nairobi, just with the, the, there is a, an application, Mr. Speaker, that shows you where all the ships in the, in, in the world are at any particular time, including uh, flights, Mr. Speaker. You can tell whether an Ethiopian Airlines or a Kenya Airways flight has reached London that took off in the morning. All those people do is to sit with those manifests of sheep carrying a, a product, whether it is sugar, whether it is maize, seeing which is the nearest. Then they develop policy to ensure that by the time a gazette notice comes out, that sheep is in Mombasa. It's ridiculous, Mr. Speaker. Even now, our farmers are being blackmailed. In fact, it is pure blackmail, uh, Senator Mandago, because your farmers are being told, if you don't sell the maize that you have in your stores or the ones that you're harvesting at the price that we want, at the price that we have set, irrespective of whether it is lower or higher than the inputs that went into producing that maize, that we are going to import maize. It is a threat. It is blackmail, Mr. Speaker. There is nothing else to eat. Mr. Speaker, we were also a bit concerned a few years back when the current president, uh, uh, His Excellency William Ruto, was the deputy president, and when the farmers in the rift were complaining about, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the reduction in profitability in farming maize, he actually encouraged them to move away from maize and start farming avocado. So, uh, Senator Mofire, when you talk about the decline in numbers of farmers, we must go back and ask ourselves, why are these numbers declining, Mr. Speaker? Then, Mr. Speaker, there's a question of high cost of inputs. For us in the Azimio coalition, we had proposed that in fact we need a broad analysis of all the costs that go into producing any crop. And try and see if we can manufacture some of the inputs locally to make them cheaper and more available to the farmers. We talked about uh, uh, even investing in locally made mechanization, whether it is the tractors, whether it is the jembes, Mr. Speaker, it is quite uh, unfortunate that even the most basic farm inputs are, in, uh, are, are, you know, imported from elsewhere. And the question of setting up our own fertilizer factory, I was hoping that Senator, Ma uh, Senator Mandago, because he was the governor of Wasingishu, could give us, as a Senate, an idea of what happened to the fertilizer industry that we were supposed to set up in the North Reef to help our farmers, Mr. Speaker. So all these issues, for us, these are the proposals that we had made. And I have always argued that, in fact, if something makes sense, like on this particular issue, it doesn't matter which political persuasion you follow. It is a fact that we need to protect our farmers. We must do something about uh, the current situation to stem uh, future crises when it comes to food. And I believe that our colleagues, even on the other side and the majority side, will agree with us that some of the proposals we made are positive proposals to encourage production of food, Mr. Speaker. We both spoke about uh, guaranteed minimum returns when we were campaigning. I had the current president promise that, he, in fact, this is going to be a key pillar of his administration. We promised the same, and Mr. Speaker, we don't understand 
where have they departed from the promises that they made to one inch? Mr. Speaker, we also spoke strongly about the need for agro-processing, that in fact, when we start infusing value to uh, the produce that comes from our farms, we will see more profitability from this exercise and our farmers will be more encouraged to produce. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, let me address this question of the attitude that we are seeing from government in the, in the face of all these complaints and cries about Kenyans that we need a conversation about this food importation before it is done. Mr. Speaker, if you look at our constitution, Article 73.1a, uh, Sabbatical 3 and B, Mr. Speaker, it says that authority assigned to a state officer is a public trust to be exercised in a manner that demonstrates respect for the people. Then 73.2 goes on to say that it vests the, in the state officer the responsibility to serve the people rather than the power to rule them. Mr. Speaker, in light of all our cries as representatives of the people, in light of the cries of the church, in light of the cries of the farmers, how can a government continue hard-headedly to proceed with a program that is meeting with so much resistance and concern from the people of Kenya? Mr. Speaker, you can see that this attitude is not only with the CS for trade, because he has his boss. If indeed the president does not share in the attitude of the CS for trade, uh, Moses Kuria, he should not even wait for members of parliament to collect signatures to impeach him. He should just say that this is not the attitude we came into power with. We came into power with the promise of being the government for the Mwanainchi, Mr. Speaker. Because of the, you know, the, the arrogance that is being displayed by the cabinet secretary, that he has the audacity to talk to the Kenyan people the way that he's talking, saying that, yes, we only have a thousand ways to die. Why don't we add one more way to kill Kenyans, Mr. Speaker? And in light of all the complaints, in fact, what I expect him to do, Mr. Speaker, he should not dare gazette that importation that he wanted to gazette. He should hold off. If Senator Gerard Gay is to be believed, let us have that conversation as Kenyans about the safety of the food that is being imported into this country. And in the event that he, uh, you know, continues in, his, in, in that attitude where he believes that he's the boss of everyone, because this food, even this GMO that is going to be imported, Mr. Speaker, is not just going to be eaten in the household of CS uh, Moses Kuria. It is for all of us. It is for all our children. We are not going to know the distinction. Mr. Speaker, people even spoke here about the need to label. But I argue that even if you label to a hungry man, Mr. Speaker, and you tell him this unga is GMO, but it's 10 shillings, and this one is organic, it's 100 shillings. It is a false choice for that person because they don't have much of a choice in that particular matter. So, Mr. Speaker, I stand to support. I would wish that some of the proposals that we had made during the campaigns can be adopted for us to invest more in, uh, uh, in, in irrigation, for us to invest more in manufacturing, especially manufacturing local, uh, local manufacturing of inputs for farming. I would want for us to ensure that we support and encourage our farmers so that we do not keep uh, seeing a decline in the number of those people who engage in farming. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Sige Hilal.